Welcome to this video showing you how to set up Family Browser for Autodesk Revit 2011. When you first download and install Family Browser, when you first start up Revit, um, you can find that in the Add-ins tab, you should now have an Add-ins tab if you didn't have before, and you'll find four icons um, in the Family Browser um, tool palette here. Um, the first one um, is a link to the setup video, which is what you're watching now. The next one is when you're ready to purchase Family Browser, you click on that and that will take you to our website where you can purchase Family Browser. The last one um, tells you that you have zero days left, and that's because at this stage it hasn't been registered. So the first thing you need to do is you need to register Family Browser. And there's two options, um, whether you have a license key, which at this stage you won't have, or I want to evaluate KiwiCode's family browser. Select this option for trial family browser for seven days. That's what you want to do. Make sure it's highlighted. Click on activate. It will say your license is now activated. Now we go close, and it will tell you you must restart Revit for the changes to take effect. So we go OK and I will restart Revit. Okay, I've now restarted Revit and when I go to the add-ins tab now you'll notice that we have one more icon now, the family browser. We've still got the four icons we had here before except the days left, if it's less than nine days, will show up how many days are left on your trial. Mine on this system here has got three days left. Um, you'll have at least a week on the trial. So we're going to start Family Browser for the first time. We click on Family Browser and it pops up a message box that it just created a um, catalog file and Family Browser is now opened. It actually opened up on my other monitor. It, it, for a start, because we haven't had any, any tab groups or tabs, um, it's just a blank palette. We can click on the vertical bar there and it will maximize and minimize it or collapse it. Um, don't click on any of these buttons here else you'll get an error report like that. No, that's not even that bottom one there does. So um, at this stage don't click on any buttons there but what we need to do is first off create a tab group. So I'm just going to right mouse click over the palette and we've got tab group options and we want to add a group. Okay, I'm going to just add a group in my C drive. You can add this anywhere and I'm going to call it design. Because I've already got a design one there, it's going to ask me to override it. Yes, I want to override it. So we've added one tab group. If I now right mouse click on there, on the top drop down we've got that tab group of design. I'm going to add another one and I'm going to call it documentation. And I've got one of those, I'm going to overwrite that as well. So now I've got two tab groups, one design and one documentation. I'm going to go to the design tab group and now I want to add a tab to this tab group. So I'm going to tab options, add a tab. And I'm going to go and search on my hard drive. In this case, can be hard drive network, um, internet URL, um, anywhere that there are Revit families. I'm going to go to um, the default library location on the install, um, which is Program Data Autodesk um, Revit 2011 metric metric library and I'm going to go for doors go OK and notice that it's automatically put the doors in here I can type in a different name if I want but I'm happy enough with doors and it will now create that tab I'm going to create one more tab um, tab options add a tab now it's remembered where I went last time to the directory so I'm going to go down and go to Windows and I'll add Windows. Once again it's put Windows in there, it's the name of the tab it's going to create. Okay now I've got doors and windows and this is in the design tab group. So if I change the documentation, because we haven't added any tabs to the documentation yet there's none there. If 
I go back to design, they're still there. So I'm going to add some tabs to the documentation. This time I'm going to do it slightly different. I'm going to go tab options. Instead of add a single tab, I'm going to add a directory. And I'm going to go and search for a directory that has a whole lot of subdirectories. Um, we'll look at detailing components, and there goes a whole lot of different subdirectories. Now, what this will do if I highlight components and add that folder, it's going to add that as well as any subfolders and create tabs for them. So if I go OK, it'll run away, find all those subfolders, um, and create the tabs for them. Now you might need to uh, sort some of them out by deleting the tabs. If say if you wanted, to, you didn't need this one here, we could right mouse click tab options and delete a current tab, and that will get rid of that one. Um, we can orientate these tabs differently. At the moment, they're all stacked there. If we click on this little button here, it will now stack them nicely that way, or you can switch back that way. So that's the basics of setting up Family Browser. Um, so check out the right mouse click. Once um, you've got it in here, it'll remember where it is again. If I start Family Browser, it will start up exactly where you put it last time. Um, to resize the dialog, you have to show the border, and then we'll resize it. I want it. Oops. And when you're happy, um, remove the border. It will remember that next time it's set up. So to insert a, a family, it's just a matter of selecting the family. And it will go away and load it. Or in the case if you've got type catalogs, um, you expand and show all the types, it'll go away. Um, just load in that single type and insert it. So that's the basics of setting up Family Braille Browser. Thanks for trialling.